if you are one of the millions taking vitamin D, 50% chances are you are doing it all wrong and it could be more dangerous than you think. Now there are three key things I want to get into in this video regarding vitamin D. Number one is how and when to take vitamin D, the ideal dosage and the strategies to retain this vitamin D in the body. Now this strategy is what I call the KMB strategy. So stick around as I answer all of these questions which will gain you valuable insight into optimizing vitamin D for a better health outcome. Vitamin D is known for its health benefit. It has a lot of different protective roles in the body, supporting cardiovascular health, helping the body to absorb calcium and phosphorus, which are important in beauty, healthy bones and strong teeth. It also helps strengthen the immune system, strengthen muscle function. It improves insulin function. But despite all of these protective roles of vitamin D, a significant percentage of the population, actually more than 1 billion people, are deficient in vitamin D. Now, vitamin D is a fast-soluble vitamin, which means that it does not dissolve in water. And one of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of people make whenever they are taking vitamin D is that they take it along with any food of their choice. So based on the biochemistry of vitamin D, the best way to take vitamin D is together or immediately after eating a fatty meal. That is going to give you a much better absorption. Now, the time of the day, whether it is morning, afternoon or night, does not actually matter when it comes to taking vitamin D. So basically what actually matters is the type of food you are taking your vitamin D along with. So always take your vitamin D along with a heavy fat that is going to give you maximum absorption of this nutrient, okay? Now, how much of this vitamin D should you actually be taking? What is the ideal dosage? Well, the recommended dietary allowance for vitamin D is 600 international units. But that's actually too small. That is not really going to do a lot of things for your body. So personally, I would recommend you start taking 4,000 international units, which is perfectly okay. That is not going to result in toxicity, okay? Now, you might actually be taking this vitamin D, you might be taking this supplement and then you might actually be consuming foods that are high in vitamin D. But when you go to your doctors and check your vitamin D level, you will actually notice that your vitamin D level is very low, you are deficient in vitamin D. The problem is not that you are not taking vitamin D, you are not taking the 4,000 international units of vitamin D. The problem is that you are deficient in other minerals and this is why I call this strategy the KMB strategy which stands for vitamin K2, magnesium and boron. Now vitamin D helps the body to absorb calcium from the diet which is important in beauty, hairy bones and strong teeth but this vitamin D alone cannot determine where this calcium ends up in the body but when you are taking vitamin K2, vitamin K2 helps in moving this calcium out of the blood into the bones and teeth okay so vitamin k2 helps to prevent the accumulation of calcium in your blood as well as the deposition of calcium in soft tissue like the kidneys and the blood vessels so taking vitamin k2 along with vitamin d is very important and the same goes with magnesium magnesium is involved in the activation of vitamin d it helps the body to convert the inactive form of vitamin d into the active form by acting as a cofactor to those enzymes that are involved in the conversion of vitamin D in the liver and the kidney. So when you are deficient in magnesium, you are going to have the inactive form of vitamin D and the magnesium also helps in the expression of the vitamin D receptors, which means that even if you are taking vitamin D and you are not taking magnesium, these receptors will not be expressed and that will result in vitamin D deficiency. And boron, on the other hand, helps the body to retain vitamin D by increasing the half-life of vitamin D. So when you are taking magnesium, vitamin K2 and boron, that is going to allow vitamin D to stay in your body. That is going to prevent vitamin D deficiency, okay? So this is also another mistake I see a lot of people make. They are deficient in boron, they are deficient in vitamin K2 as well as magnesium. If you are deficient in these TV nutrients, which I call the KMB, that is going to result in a lot of problems that can make you to be deficient in vitamin D. So guys, I hope you take care of your head and then uh, make it a great day.